It is a known fact that without peace and security, no community, state or nation can make meaningful progress. One of the challenges which the TAOG administration faced in its efforts to deliver the dividends of democracy to Arbians, in line with his election promises, was insecurity during the first tenure of his administration. In fact, the Abia State Executive Governor, Chief T.A. Oji, had hardly settled down to the serious business of governance when the hydra-headed problem of kidnapping hit Abia State from some neighboring states where it was then part of their youth restiveness. The problem increased in tempo and intensity as it almost paralyzed the economic and social life of Aba and its environs while it threatened other major towns in Abia State. Worse is the fact that this menace resulted in truncating most of the efforts of the government to provide basic amenities as most contractors handling projects in the state were under threat by kidnappers. My fellow Abians, it is with a very heavy heart and a keen sense of our government's responsibilities to the security of our people that I address you today on the heinous issue of human kidnapping in Abia State. I have been in Abuja with the utmost mission of meeting with the federal government and other relevant security agencies of our country to find a lasting solution to the rampant issue of kidnapping in Abia State, especially in the Enyimba city of Aba, where this evil is forcing families to abandon their residences. I was totally in shock to hear the very sad news that kidnappers have struck again. And this time, their victims are our own young and vulnerable children. I must first of all sympathize with the families and school authorities of the 15 pupils of the APA International School APA who are still being held in captivity by the kidnappers. I will take this opportunity to inform the parents that our government, in conjunction with the federal government, is doing everything in our power to ensure that these young victims are released quickly and safely to rejoin their parents teachers and friends. The kidnap of these uh, children has been a source of a worrisome event uh, the week long that uh, the ordeal, the ordeal lasted. And uh, yesterday we came out in aid of the police and we are happy that before you are the 15 very, very young children that heartless don't know if they were Nigerians, but heartless persons have subjected them to this ordeal for the past one week. Uh, there's no doubt that they will need some immediate attention, but they are all in good shape. Thank you, Your Excellency. Start by saying that my day is made today. The first thing we have to do is to thank God who has made today possible. From there, we thank the president of this country who showed utmost concern for what happened to this state.
Governor T.A. Oji recalls the menace of kidnapping in slowing down the pace of his administration's efforts during his first tenure to take the state to greater heights. We had a challenge in Abia. We had a challenge in Abia in my first tenure when kidnappers wanted to overrun this state, kidnappers and arm robbers, and we faced it squarely. If there's no security, there will be no progress. When there was no security, contractors ran away. Because when the contractors are working, these hoodlums will go and kidnap them. They will go and kidnap them and start asking for money. And no person likes that. Contractors who have come, some of them are white people, who have come to work for us, and they are harassed by kidnappers. What they did was to abandon our projects. And as at that time, the pace of development was slow. And many people did not understand and appreciate what we were undergoing. They didn't understand. They were asking, ah, this road has not been repaired. This road. But these were roads that we gave out contracts for, for the contractors to work on. They have been contracted out. But the contractors refused to come because of insecurity. It was against this backdrop that these astute politician, technocrat, thoroughbred strategist, and determined leader took far-reaching measures to arrest the situation. For instance, Governor T.A. O.J. administration provided a comprehensive legal framework for dealing with kidnapping by presenting a bill to the State House of Assembly on measures to address the kidnapping and other new but demeaning criminal activities threatening the peace and security of Abians. The bill, which was overwhelmingly endorsed by the Abia State House of Assembly, had a salutary effect on government's resolution to nip kidnapping in the board. Other measures taken by Governor T.A. Oji to ensure peace and security include massive equipping of law enforcement agencies. For instance, the Ochenda administration purchased and donated hundreds of vehicles equipped with state-of-the-art communication gadgets to track down these daredevil youths and their sponsors. In addition, he provided adequate financial support to security agencies such as the army, the police, etc., deployed in Abia State. In Abia State, and I know that as we do this, God will also, we can't forget him, God will help us so that Abia State will still be the number one state and God's own state where criminality becomes zero tolerance. To the glory of God, and benefit of Abia and mankind, I do this. Uh, I feel highly elated this evening with the comment passed by His Excellency. Sir, on behalf of officers and men of 14th Brigade of the Nigerian Army in Ohafia, 82 Division Nigerian Army in Enugu, and the entire Nigerian army, I want to assure His Excellency, with the comment made and with the charges forwarded to me, that Abia State should be zero tolerance for any act of criminality. So people, whoever cares to listen, it's not as if we are doing lip service or we are just trying to praise you. I'm not a politician, I'm a civil servant, but um, we appreciate the enormity of fund that the state government is sinking to security, not just in terms of vehicle, but operational support, but in whatever form. These are some of the things that uh, people may not be able to measure. People may not be able to measure, um, you know, funds being spent on security. Security is a very expensive business. People don't understand. But to the glory of God, we've seen what Abia State was when we came here. And two years after, we've seen what Abia State has become under your leadership. We just want to pray that God will sustain you and see you through this uh, enormous task before you. As the governor also massively mobilized traditional rulers, community leaders and Abians of goodwill to provide necessary support and information for the security agencies. He also sensitized religious leaders to fast and pray. An apostle of peace and indefatigable politician Governor T.A. Oji, who took Abians into the mainstream of Nigerian politics 
and enjoys good rapport with President Goodluck Jonathan, successfully attracted the federal government attention to the menace of kidnapping in Abia State. This resulted in the intervention of the army in collaboration with the police and other law enforcement agencies. Worthy to note is that Governor T.A. Orji's partnership with the federal government in fighting kidnapping and other high crimes resulted in the resuscitation of the abandoned Ohafia Army Barracks, now 14th Brigade Nigerian Army Ohafia. Governor T.A. Orji speaks on his administration's bold steps in winning the war against kidnapping and sustaining peace and security in Abia State. Many, many methods. One of the methods was the issue of amnesty, which worked a little and then collapsed. But the major one is this issue of taking Abia to the center. To the center, when I mean center, the federal government, controlled by PDP government. We entered, we came out from the political party we, we, we were before that was not performing. We went away from that political party and entered into a political party that would take us to the center. So we became part and parcel of the center. And with that, we developed a rapport, a rapport whereby you go to the federal government and talk to the federal government and they will listen to you. The federal government, when I went and appealed to them, look at what is happening in terms of kidnapping, they responded. They brought military men here who now combined with other security agencies fought kidnapping to a standstill. And not only that, the federal government also approved the rehabilitation of the 34 Brigade in Ohafia. And today, soldiers are resident in that place. And from there, they have camps all around Abia State. And when such is the case, at our beck and call, they can come and fight any kidnapping issue. The use of motorcycles as a means of transportation honestly facilitated a kidnapping in Abia State because they used those motorcycles to meander into the villages. They used it also to capture uh, innocent citizens that they took a bill to the House of Assembly, that bill was passed, and we banned the use of motorcycles as a means of transportation in Abia State. We did not stop there. We now introduced the use of tricycle to replace motorcycles. And uh, today, the difference is very clear. Clear in the sense that it has drastically reduced the incidence of kidnapping and arm robbery in Abia State by that singular act that we took of banning uh, motorcycles as a means of transportation. There is no doubt that today, Abia State enjoys peace and security which have provided the nebling environment for the Governor T.A. Orji administration outstanding performance of meeting the yearnings and aspirations of Abians by executing landmark projects in all the sectors of human development. Abians and visitors to the state, including the Inspector General of Police, Alahaji M.D. Abubakar, cannot agree less with Governor T.A. Orji that Abia is now a heaven for foreign investments in view of the peace and tranquility that prevail in the states. I want to say this has demonstrated the fact that you are a man of the people. Your Excellency, you have given us the motivation, you have given us the vehicles to work. The performance of the administration of Governor TOG in the area of security can be said to be very, very commendable. Commendable in the sense that having been able to overcome the security challenges, one would say that overcoming the security challenges is a major milestone in the administration of our dear governor. The last day, we that goes to club, I come back anytime I like. That way we lost all hope. So things are getting better. I mean, now you can go to anywhere you want in Abba, no matter the time, and come back to your house. No problem, no more rest. And uh, unlike before, when even if you are coming to your gate, you are you're not sure of uh, when you are going, whether somebody is waiting for you or somebody is about to happen. 
Now you can relax even in a, a people that goes to Bia Palo. They relax there. The way that goes to club, I come back anytime I like. Okay, we appreciate the government yeah. of Abia State under the leadership of Dr. T. O. Jochendo, who has restored peace in Aba. You know, Aba is now a very good town, it's a free town where people can go for their businesses and come back in peace. Where you can stay at home, you can relax in relaxation spots. You know, we have a lot of relaxation spots here in Aba where people would usually go out to drink and catch some fun. But during the kidnapping era, it was not like that. But thanks to the government that has restored peace back to Aba. People can now go and enjoy their life and come back at any time they want. The only thing you can see on the way is the military men and the Mopul and police. They ask you, how, how, where are you coming from? You, you are able to tell, tell them where you are coming from. They search your boots and there is no weapon. You can just go. Abba is now a peaceful town. We thank the government. Especially Dr. George who brought peace back to Abba. Thank it is one thing to achieve peace and security and a greater task to sustain it. What measures are being taken by Governor T.A. Oja administration to maintain peace and security in the state? Again, what are the expectations of government from Abians in the sustainers of peace and security for the accelerated development of the state? One thing is to bring peace. One thing is to fight kidnapping and send them away from the state. One thing is to fight armed robbery. Another thing is to sustain it so that you will be free throughout not being partially free today, tomorrow they will come, no. So the sustenance is another project, a big project. The first thing you have to do is that you, as a government, you ensure that the environment is conducive for every person. The environment also has to be conducive for the security agents that are fighting this criminality. You have to empower them. You don't uh, send somebody to go and fight. You don't send a soldier to go and fight without giving him a gun. Else he'll be captured and made a prisoner of war. So when you're sending somebody to go and fight, you have to give him the implements with which to fight. And that is what we have been doing. We have been devoting a lot of money. You know, security business is a capital intensive business. We have been devoting a lot of resources, a lot of money. And I don't have any regrets about it putting in a lot of money to equipping the military, equipping the police, equipping the other security agencies in terms of logistics. Just within two weeks, we've been able to donate almost 100 vehicles to the security agencies in Abia State. Vehicles that are equipped. With these vehicles, they can crack and pursue the criminals out of Abia State, not only giving them equipment, you also have to fund them. You fund them, fund them to the extent that you can, and make them realize that you are funding them to the extent that you can, so that they will appreciate. So you fund them, you fund the army, you fund the police, you fund the SSS, you fund all those that are involved in the security. Uh, security situation in Abia State. And then, what of the people? What of the people? You have to sensitize them, those in the villages. You have to entice them so that they can profile uh, information because they are the people who are living with these criminals and they see them and they know them. So they will give you authentic information. And there's no person, you know, patriotism in, in, our, in, in our country is uh, not very high. It's only few people who can come and give information about these kidnapper, kidnappers without being, without being at least uh, giving them some incentive. So you have to give them incentive so that they'll, be, they'll come out boldly and willingly and tell you, give you authentic information. And with that information, you give it to the security agents and they will fight and get results. So we've been doing all these things and other things. With the apparatus that we have on ground, we don't expect much from Abians. What we primarily expect from them is information. Let them give us information about these kidnappers, these people who break oil pipeline, and the arm robbers. 
Let us just let them give us information. That is the first and foremost thing and the most important thing that we expect from them. All Abians. Let them give us information. Then, if there's any other way, they can contribute to security. If maybe when we launch the security trust fund, those who have money are willing. Let them contribute. Let them contribute, but let them be sure and give us information. And then the traditional rulers and others who are in position, let them sensitize people about security situation in Abia and insecurity, two of them. Let them sensitize them. Let them make them be aware that security is very, very important and that every person should be an agent of security. Indeed, Governor T.A. O.G. achievement in restoring and sustaining peace and security in Abia State has placed him as one of the best governors in Nigeria in the face of security challenges being experienced in many states of the Federation. Little wonder Governor T.A. O.G. has been honored by many high-profile organizations and institutions in the country. For instance, he was recently honored as Peace Ambassador by National Council on Peace and Security led by Alhaji Abagana. We are looking, we're looking for peace and unity. You know, always and everywhere. Once you get the right person at the right position, things will work. Things will work. And may God guide you to look even more and more everywhere. It is my pleasure to give you this small combination from us. Given the security challenges in many states in the country, it is logical to garner from Governor T.A. Oje what his colleagues in those states could do to restore peace and security in their area. My advice, my general advice is to tell those states, the leadership of the states, that's the governors and all those who are involved, to be dogged. They should not relent. They should be dogged, determined to fight it. Because it's a temporary, some, it's a temporary issue that they can overcome if they are strong and focused. And secondly, they have to partner very, very well with all the security agencies in the state. Not only partnering with the security agencies, they have to be in alliance with their people. They have to be in alliance with their people. Talk with them, know their problems, and know how to solve those problems. As Abians and indeed Nigerians held Governor T.A. Oji over his dogged and creative approach to sustain peace and security in Abia, we cannot but emulate his unique leadership qualities, for without peace and security, there is no true progress. Today, Governor T.A. Oji has become a reference point as far as security issues are concerned. Bravo, Ochendo Abia.